on salvage hunters. Drew visits the Vegas of the North, but can he buy a piece of it? They're like alien jelly babies. They are. Only in Blackpool. A visit to a pub packed with antiques gives him ideas. Too much. It's like, if I could get all my customers drunk as well, I'm sure I could charge them a lot more money. <laughs> These giant shells surprise the team. What is it? Look at the size of that. The size of that? That's unbelievable. But the standard of Drew's joke surprises no one. Hopefully somebody will shell out for them. Boo! Drew? Oh, I'm here all week. <laughs> Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> Woo! That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. With his wife, Rebecca... Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk into gems, which then find new homes in houses, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up your street. Yeah. Good afternoon, Drew Pritchards. Drew has built his reputation on his ability to source unusual one-off items, and he's always been a bit of a lone wolf. Leaving my business to pe other people to look after has always been a bit stressful for me, and I still have a real problem with it. I think I must be a slightly control freak. Go on. Back in your room. Today, one member of staff is about to get a crash course in hunting the weird, the wonderful and the historic Drew style. What do you think, honestly? Um, yeah, I think they're great. Yeah. Mark has worked with Drew for almost five years, but today is the first time he's ever been on a buying trip. We're throwing him right at the deep end. He is completely convinced that we do nothing and just go into the pub and buy the odd bit of antiques. He's going to see the real deal and what it takes to make this job work. And he really is in at the deep end. The plan is to meet a lead Drew has been pursuing for years. They're heading to Windsor to a family-run travelling fairground that specialises in restoring rides dating back to the Victorian era. We had the largest travelling vintage fun fair anywhere in the world. Fairground people rarely sell to outsiders, and when they do, it's certainly not to dealers. I want to find the thing that wows you, that, that you've never seen before, and this is going to be one of those places. This could be their one and only opportunity, so Drew and Mark will need to be fully prepared. Just don't know what's there. Right. Don't know how much is there and don't know how much it is. I'm sure that's part of your job. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just not getting done, Mark. You're letting me down, you're I'm letting yourself down, I've let my family I'm down. the family down. I've let the queen down. Okay, so more of a suck it and see approach. Wow. Look at these old travelling things they're living in. Look at the quality of that. They're amazing. God, I've never seen so many of these old rides together. Fantastic, isn't it? What a brilliant place. Oh, God, is that a wall of death? Wall of death. I get really crazy. I'll just vomit every if I go on anything like this. It'll be 30 seconds of fun followed by two hours of sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pay to see that. Yeah. <laughs> Drew and Mark go in search of Joby Carter, son of the late John Carter, who founded the fair over 30 years ago. Wow, there's, there's gallopers. Nice. That's a steam one, look. Steam engine. It's got to be over 100 years old to be a steam-driven one, hasn't it? 1895. 1895, there you go. Look at that, uh, the kiosk at the front there. That's a fabulous thing. Joby. How are you doing? Hello, Hi, Drew. Hi, Joby. Mark. Hi, Mark. How are we Just doing? admiring this. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm very proud of it. It's like a family heirloom, really. We've, uh, we've had it on the road since 1977. Steam-powered carousels or gallopers like this rarely come up for sale. If this example was to be sold, it would bring at least £100,000, a bit out of Drew's price range. Most of the scenic work you see on the fair yeah. is done by my mum. Oh, really? There's stuff like the horses and this more Art Deco, more graphic work. That's kind of that's my style, that's what I do. Okay. For what he's doing, I think, is really important and he's keeping this massive tradition and a British tradition alive. It's not just about having artefacts that we show to people, it's about maintaining traditions that they used back then. Their skills are dying out, and once they're gone, they're gone for good. Those were plywood. The originals are in the yard. I've got them. I'd love to go and have a look in the yard yeah, and see well, what you've got. I'll Can you do that? There, yeah. It's a short hop to the yard to meet Joby's mum, Anna. 
I'm very, very lucky to get in here today, and I've got to find something good. But just to get in is unheard of. Hi, I'm Drew. Oh, hello, Drew. Hi, just seen Joe B sent me up here. I think some of the stuff you want to see is up here. OK. We've got some panels down here. Well, do you want to climb in and have a look? If I could, that'd be great, yeah. Yeah. These are the ones Joby mentioned to me down at the fairground. I didn't know I was going to have to work. Give it to Mark, make him do something. He does yeah, very little anyway. Spending. I'm going to get my hands dirty Careful. again. Oh, yeah. shame. Oh, <laughs> lads, look at him. No, usually he's in the office. Is he? Yeah. Oh, he's perfect. a very delicate flower, you know. Is he? Yeah, it's a shame, a bit... isn't it? Finally, Mark gets his hands on some historical artefacts and learns lesson number one. Don't break them. Oh, he's, oh. he's usually stuck. Have you broken anything? Only his leg. That's OK. Lovely things. How old are these? Um, I don't know. I should think about turn of the century. Turn of the century. Yeah. About 100 odd years old. Yeah. Can you pick that end up, Mark? Uh, okay. I'll put this end down if you can. Yeah. Come on, get it. Look at that. Beautiful. You know the dust is extra. <laughs> I'll leave that here. It just ooze authenticity. They ooze charm. They ooze beauty. They ooze the cool fact that they have just got it in spade load. No, that's all carved. Lovely that's paint. That's that's gorgeous. Yeah. Joby arrives from the fairground and Drew gets straight to business over the Edwardian pieces. What have you found? Oh, all sorts. <laughs> Some great here. Something fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I like these. These are lovely. These are from uh, probably a scenic ride of one description or another. Have you got more of this? No, that's, that's it. That's the one piece. That's it. I mean, that, was, that was given to my dad. It's just such a beautiful piece. It's a little bit sentimental. I don't know why. Some things you, you associate, you know, I associate that with my dad and I associate it with the gallopers. So, I mean, got to ask, are these things for sale? They belong to Mum. I'm kind of quite attached to them, but... <laughs> you could be my agent, though, JB. I don't, I don't know. You, you do get sentimental about things, don't you? My gut reaction is, I don't think they're going to sell them. Those Edwardian pillars are going to be pricey because they know what this stuff is, and it's, it's it, the, the importance they put on it adds to the value. Things here, I got a feeling I know what you want to do with these. Clear, you can see in his eyes. I'll give you a price, but I'm just going to be big enough so that you don't buy it because I don't want to sell it. A real bit of fairground history here. Um, you're a dealer. You mm. could sell these abroad. Yeah. And there's nothing to stop you doing that. I'm no. Ideally, I'd see them in the shop at sort of. 1800 to 2400, something like that, because they're just an exceptional item. Uh, a couple of grand, to be yeah, honest. They're quite nice in the corner of my shed. Okay. And if I want to put them in the entrance of the fair or something like that, sure. they're, they're, there they are. I'm not going to make a profit on it. The antique pieces are clearly out of Drew's price range. He keeps looking for something more modern but still appealing. Oh, my word, he's trying to devalue it. <laughs> I mean, just like, bang, wow, these are something I just love. Even though they're relatively new, Drew knows he could sell these mid-20th century pieces for almost £400 each. Both the same price every time on them? Yeah, both yep. the same. They just got too rough, and it'd be quicker for me doing new ones than yep. it would to replace them. Oh, 60 quid each. Phenomenal. What an amazing-looking thing. Cannot wait to put these in the shop. £100 a pair? Yeah. Yeah, deal. great. OK, we'll have those. So we've got the ball rolling now. We've got some money-changing hands. So let's get some stuff bought, get it in the back of the van, get back to the shop. Ooh, what's in here? Lots of things. Wow. Ooh. They're, they're nice as well. We, we, I actually restored a couple of these. Did you see those before? No, what is it? They're flare lamps. You filled up with power fin. Uh, before they had electric yeah. light on the fairground, they had, <laughs> I had this idea I would uh, use them. We did have some more that we sold. So I hung them up. Got them, tried to get them all working. <laughs> it was flames. Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, rather you than me. I don't know whether the power fins changed or what, but I thought, yeah, maybe I'll put some electric I... lights in that. <laughs> don't they used to explode in the old days? Oh, They've got God. a reputation for actually really? exploding. They're lethal. Yeah, but look at that, look. Yeah, that's just a bomb. Yeah, it is, it's yeah. a little bomb. <laughs> it's just yeah, a bomb. pretty much. But I think, you know, they didn't have health and safety. It was nah, just like a draw, wasn't it? It flames got blown up. on people. <laughs> Following the family tradition, Joby is a recognised fairground artist in his own right and shows Drew some of his work. Please do not bang the machines. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that in the office. That'd be great. Even though modern, signs like these painted by Joby could bring Drew around £100 each. The pony ride one, 75 quid. 
Right. Carter's Yard. That kind of... There again, maybe a little bit sentimental, cos I didn't do it. Under quid. Right. OK. So, 175. Can you do 150 for the pair of these? You're at 175. Give us 160. Yeah, OK, fine. So what's next, then? You've got more stuff? Whilst Drew and Joby have been making deals, Joby's mum, Anna, has been sifting through her own stores. You might like them. Ooh, these look good. Were these menu boards or what? I don't know. She's lovely, isn't oh, she? Oh, she's lovely. Look at that her face. face is gorgeous, isn't it? Look at that. Brilliant. That's the bet I've been waiting for today. These are the, these are the two yeah. pieces for me, particularly her. How about that? Oh, my God, look That's at what it. I look like when I used Ooh, to try to play golf. <laughs> Quite angry, yeah. you couldn't hit the ball. I quite like those two guys as well, you know. The sort of snooty faces on that, particularly him. I was just looking at him thinking, I'm taking him home. Early 20th century cutout figures like these could easily bring Drew £60 each. Are these for sale? They could be, yeah. Yeah? What do you want for the what would you want for the, the singly or as a bundle? Or... See my agent. Okay. Where do you want to be on these, Joe? Mum, mm. what would what have you got in your head? I've got no idea. I mean, this one I find really hard to part with. She's so lovely and she's the nicest one. Mm. And I basically just want to keep the nicest one, which kind of spoils the deal, spoils doesn't it? Spoils it for me, then, really, yeah. I don't mind <laughs> about that, really, true, to be I honest. I know, I know, yeah, I know. Well, I do you want to sell it or not, Mum? <laughs> well, she's pretty special, isn't she? But you'd have to tempt me, Joby. It'd have to be a bit... Go on, then. What's, what do you want? What do you want to do? Uh, well, I say if you wanted a lot, I'd put them up, up with that lot of 300 quid. 300 quid, so 30 quid a piece. Yeah. 300 pounds, 300 pounds, 300 pounds. Yeah, deal. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have those. Brilliant. Great. Little bargain for me at the end of the day. I mean, it's quite a decent little pile of pieces there. These, these are great, though, prize every time. We'll hang them up in the shop and they'll look brilliant. I'll be keeping that. It's really nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's lovely. I love the wear to it. I nag them because their signs are getting tatty, mm. and I make them do new ones, and then that's more valuable than the new ones. How does that work? It's just the history, isn't it? Carter's, yeah. Carter's uh, Steam Fair, it's famous. Drew leaves with several pieces from the fair. Not the old pieces he'd been hoping for, but they are unique nonetheless. Huge pleasure meeting you both. Yeah, you too. Really enjoyed thank it. You, and thank you so much for letting us in. The van's loaded and Mark's broken his salvage hunting duck. Actually, I'm really excited because I never You're get really to excited. do this. I never get to do this part of the job. You never get to work. <laughs> <laughs> Even lunch could be a salvage hunting opportunity. Close by in Windsor is a pub where apparently everything's for sale. I've heard about this guy and he's got a pub locally and it's full of stuff. Everything in the pub is for sale, um, even down to Captain the Dog, if you're really very interested. But Drew's not getting his hopes up too high. You know, to be honest, being really honest about it, stuff in a pub... Yeah. So ..hanging okay. off the walls... You never know. We're looking, look. basically, what I think we're looking at is a load of heavily nicotine-stained horse brasses and oh, unfunny right. postcards. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> there you go. Pub. Uh, hey. The Alma. Oh, the Alma. In business. In business. Oh, hello. He's got stuff. Oh, I, like that. I like that stuff. Public and Chris had a previous career working at Christie's in New York, so Drew may be in for a surprise when it comes to doing deals on the things he wants. This is the pub where you sell stuff? It is indeed, yes. Really? OK, yes. OK. I'm Come on Drew. In. Just, uh, Hi, Drew. Area. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? This is Mark. Uh, hello, nice Mark. Yeah, everything in the pub is for sale. You know, we've had people walk in, had a meal, and then walked out with the table and chairs. Quite a place you've got here. Yeah, it looks the business, doesn't it? Yeah. It's really good. I like it. It's a really good mix. It's not sort of like a sort of cheesy pub interior that you'll see. It's, it's a bit cooler than that, isn't it? I like it. What kind of stuff are you guys interested in? Well, anything, all sorts of everything, really. It's a strange mix. But we're always looking for something just like a little bit different. To get a sense of the prices Chris will expect, Drew picks on something he regularly buys. How much for the little tin plate sign here, the little Ingersoll? I would say we're talking around £200 for that. OK. His pricing isn't cheap. Too much for me. Obviously, getting really good prices from some of his locals after a couple of shandies. What are these here? They're, um, are those, I, these are seats. These are rowing seats, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah, I like those. So you'd sit on it, and as you were rowing, pulling backwards and forwards, 
That would go backwards and forwards with it. have wheels underneath. Yeah, there you go. Look. It says 1871 on it. I was though. quite intrigued by the name Disney, actually, on, on one of the seats. <laughs> is there? Oh, is there really? <laughs> yeah. And the cocks was only seven stone six. Yeah, look at Dis Disney's 12 stone two. <laughs> He's a fatty like me. Drew needs to gain control and get Chris's prices down if they're going to do business. He goes in hard. Prices? For, 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 for everything? Yeah. For the I, set. I would say we're looking in the region of £400. For £400. Pounds. A little bit too much. A little bit too much. I like these. I, I do like the old vintage posters. I uh, spent a bit of time collecting them. So what, what, what's for sale here? What sort of, what sort of prices? Mm. Save. Say for this one here, the big house. Yeah, that's a good looking thing. Vintage posters are collectible, but quite common. Examples like this don't go for much more than two hundred pounds. Yeah, I would say around the two hundred pound mark for, for the larger posters. Chris's antiques background means he knows the value of everything. For Drew, it's a problem. He can't make a profit with prices like these. This one here, the Hippodrome Bristol, that one there. I'd say about one hundred and fifty. Too much. It's like, if I could get all my customers drunk as well, I'm sure I could charge them a lot more money. <laughs> Putting the posters aside, Drew concentrates on a salvage hunter's staple, enamel signs. Always saleable, examples like this can sell for £50. I'd say £30 for that. £30. Do it for 20 Do 20 on that. Why don't we split the difference? 25 quid? Yeah. Yeah, fine, we'll take that. OK. We'll do it. I like that. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Even if it's just a few pounds, it's 30 quid, maybe. Sometimes it's enough just to start the ball rolling. Can we just have a, a look at these posters again around the side sure. here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now he's established some better price levels with Chris, can Drew convince this experienced negotiator to make some deals? These... I thought, OK, let's take the guy back and look at the frame ones again and see if I can get a better price, see if I can get some money off those. He's, um... This one here again, what, what did you want for that one again there? I can't remember what I said. <laughs> yeah, I would say around the 200. I think, yeah, <laughs> I think you said 100 or 120. I'd say, I'd say 120, yeah, yeah. that sounds... Sometimes just going away and coming back for things changes people's perspective a little bit. I do like that one. The Hippodrome Bristol there, the Morecambe and Wise poster. Every time I think of Morecambe and Wise, it makes me smile. So to buy a, an original poster with them as top billing, I'm going to buy it. Although not rare, the subject matter of this poster is very appealing and Drew could get around £180 for this piece of comedy history. Um, I can go to 80 which is, I think, is, is, is fair. It's given me a margin, it's given me a few quid I can make on it. OK, well, that, that's all right. Yeah, it sounds fair. I think that's fair. This one here, which I know is it's, it's French, but yeah. it's just got... I quite like to look it's at that one. The Hound of the Baskervilles. The Hound of the Baskervilles. Yeah, I'd work that out. Good. I was just yeah, the dog and Baskerville written underneath. Yeah, OK. <laughs> I think that's an older poster and a, a little bit more desirable. Well, it's, but it's smaller and it's French. So it's, I think it evens itself out. Again, the subject matter is key to this poster's appeal. Drew could easily get 120 to 130 pounds for this well-known horror classic. I'd say, I'd say about 120. 100 pounds is, is the best I would do on that. Well, like I said, if I could do the pair then at 160, <laughs> I think that's where I'd be. I'd happily pay 80 for it. So it's got some of the greats of the early horror films in there. Ten pound more, 90 pounds. Done. Yeah? Yeah, fine. OK, we'll take him as well. 90 pounds for a little poster, that's a lot of money, but I'll take the chance with those two names and the subject matter as well. The thing that catches my eye straight away is the, the Hillman sign. I know you've got one there rigged up. Yeah, I kind of like the yeah, display I like, signs. I like the colour of this. Yeah. And that it lights up. <laughs> <laughs> so don't pull everything down. That's it. Just have to come through there. Oh, it's Christmas Linux. I mean, it's very basic construction. It is. It's simple, but yeah, good looking. I'd put these as uh, mid to late fifties again, uh, and these have been just been hanging in a showroom window. They're, they've got a great look to them, and they can be hung or just put on the floor like that. You know, they're unrestored. All that original painting on the light box that they're in is chipped and coming off, and I like that too. Car fanatic Drew knows the appeal of vintage automotive pieces like these light boxes. They were made to advertise now-defunct car manufacturers Hillman and Humber, 
and could bring almost £300 each. Can you do 200 for the pair? I'm not knocking you too much on those. Yeah, we can That'd do £200 right. for the pair. Great, OK, so we'll take those as well. We've got myriad of people we can sell those to, because you've got motoring enthusiasts for both models, you've got people doing interior decor, because they're a good-looking thing as well. Good, aren't they? Sell them as a pair, isn't it? Brilliant, fantastic. OK, I think we're done here, then. Yeah, cool. Marvellous, thanks. This is Chris, my business partner. Chris, hi. We do have a lock-up down the road, and I've actually got a few more of those. Chris, will you be happy to take the guys down there? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I could take you down there. Not far. Time for a milestone in Mark's education, the storage unit. So we've seen all the really nice, tidy stuff. Can you take us to the place where there's just piles of junk lying around? Yeah. OK, which ones are they? Oh, blimey. That's so what we're looking for, another one of those frames, yeah? Do you know where they are? In there somewhere. If they... right. <laughs> Thanks for your help. <laughs> I think somewhere in one of these boxes there's some food. It's a bit smelly. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm actually... I think I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I found them. That's it. One, three. Well, that one's in nice, Nick. That's the excellent, Nick. Oh, sunbeam, and that's broken. Oh, yeah. no. It's a shame we're missing it, isn't it? Let's try and get those through there. There's got to be easier ways of making money. Oh. Oh. Just trying to get my fat stomach through here. Oh. Got to breathe in, you know you can. Oh, God, mighty. Nearly gelded myself coming through there. Yeah. Yeah, they're right, aren't they? Not as good as the light box ones, but they're OK. You don't know if you've got the M off sunbeam, do you? Uh, it should be around somewhere, but it's wet somewhere in there. Well, I might have a bit more of a dig around. Even though they're less desirable than the light boxes, these signs can bring in around £40 each. Have a look, see if you can find the M. So what are these going to run us at to, Chris, then? Well, the others were 200 for the two, wasn't it? The yeah, ones. they were different animals to these completely. The sexy one is the Sunbeam one. Yeah. That's the one that would have made the money. Comma, comma vans. Not very cool. No. Well, desirable-ish, but not cool. So broken one, good one. Broken one, good one. Where do you want to what be? Are you, what are you sort of thinking of? 50 quid. Each? No. <laughs> Come on. Uh, 75? No, it's still too much. 60. OK. 60 quid? Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. yeah? And even if he finds the end. <laughs> have you got it? No, I've not found it yet. There's a box here that says Lance Corporal H. Tull. What's that? Don't know from that. Is he still in there? <laughs> he might be still in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's just these bits then. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. The unit didn't yield as much as Drew had expected. So it's back to the pub to load up the other purchases of the day. Have a nice day out in the country today, Mark. I enjoyed that. Today. Not every day is as easy as this, you know that, don't you? Not every day is the absolute sweet little ride you've had today of, well, doing, of doing basically. You haven't done a stroke today. Nope. <laughs> nothing. You haven't done anything. No. I'm looking forward to being knee deep in pig poop. <laughs> Last week we were knee deep in pig poop. Excellent. Pulling out lamps. You've just got such a. You've got the easy, easy, easy job. Yeah, but great. Day. Easy. Mark's brief taste of life on the road is at an end, and it's time for him to proudly reveal to the team what he and Drew have achieved. But it's a tough crowd to please. We've been robbed. <laughs> <laughs> they might not look like there's a lot in there. But there and you'd be right. <laughs> oh, Jules, you like these? Oh, God. Good, good aren't they? Nice and calm. Yeah, yeah. The illuminated sign box, you know, the advertising things that would have been hanging. You know, in the front window, sort of thing. It's like a Hillman, isn't it? That is cool. I like that. It's good, isn't it? I thought I you'd like that. that. Must you stop by request? Yeah. And then uh, this bit, one of my favourite things I've got. You'll love this. Look at this. Whee! Now we're talking. Is that an original, is it? I think so. Is I'd say so. Condition, type of paper it's on, colour, print. What year was it? Everything. I don't know, I'm trying to work that, the year That's the only thing it hasn't got a year on. This piece may not have a year, but Julian employs some lateral thinking. Surely you'd be able to narrow it down by the day and the date. 
Yeah, and whatever. The Tuesday might, the 24th might be... of December isn't going to fall every year, is it? Fall's going to be uh, Tuesday, is it? God, you're yeah. quite clever. That's the cleverest thing I've ever, ever heard you heard say. Me say. You Not here for my, just <laughs> my phenomenally bad looks, you know. Yeah, yeah. Prize every time. Cool, eh? What do I win? Three hours overtime. That's straight into the shop. I don't think they need anything. Drew's wife, Rebecca, is thrilled with the stuff he's brought home. They're great. Aren't they good? Really good. I don't think salvage will ever not be trendy because the years you're covering, you're definitely 100 plus years in age, there's always something that's going to come, you know, uh, back into fashion again. You've done really, really well. Yeah. Would have been nice to get more. There we are. Look at that. The hardest bit is, is the longer you're in it, the harder it is to, to source. That's why Drew now, you know, needs to be, he needs to be out on the road. And the very next day, he is. This time, he's with Gavin, who's swapping his restoration duties for one of Drew's salvage hunting masterclasses. Once again, it's a baptism of fire, as they're off to a place where no other dealer has ever set foot. Drew's been offered the opportunity to buy some of Blackpool's famous illuminations. I'm going to see this bloke, and um, he seems like a bit of a laugh, actually, and uh, he's in charge of all the lights. Drew and Gavin are meeting Richard. He's manager of the Blackpool Illuminations Department. This is the warehouse where old lights are repaired and stored. They're like our children. You know, they're, they're something that we create lovingly in craft and then show the world. It's been going for 100 years, and that is an amazing achievement. People still come from all over the UK and beyond to see them. It's just somebody had an idea years ago. Why don't we extend the season with this fabulous lighting scheme? And it's developed from that. I love Blackpool, the Las Vegas of the north. What I'd like is sort of retro 70s gear. Oh, my good God, look at him. What? Who's that? Oh, God, crazy God. I mean, it's so kitsch, some of that stuff. It takes kitsch to another level. Blackpool just does it in a certain way that is British kitsch at its very best. I've seen one, two pictures of what we're going to look at, but Mark's not told me exactly what he just says. Buy, buy the big weird thing, you'll know what I mean. So we don't really know. Could be anything. Could be anything. <laughs> the big weird thing, that's what we do. <laughs> that's our business plan. Uh, hang on, Blackpool Council Lightworks, Illuminations Department. Them cameras. Oh, cool. <laughs> that's a cool. <good. laughs> that's a cool, sir. Oh, God, look at this. Thank God for Blackpool. Six foot tall gold seahorse. Couldn't get more British than this, could you? Richard, Drew. Nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? This is Gavin. Right. Hello, Gavin. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And you. Welcome to the Illuminations Depot. Wow. wow. <laughs> the problem is we'd love to keep everything, but there just physically isn't the space. You look at it, big space, but it's full. God, it's fantastic, isn't it? I thought it'd be like a little shed on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> million different things in this place. Lots of different ages. There's nobody been in here before. This is the Nobody's first time. Nobody's been in this depot before. You're absolutely the first. First. Well, we're, you know, we understand it's a privilege to be in here to buy this stuff. It really is. For Drew, it's not just a privilege, but a step back in time. I do remember the first time I came. I was about nine, about 1979. And it did feel like the illumination was like, oh, Jesus, look at that, all lit up. I just remember staring out the window going, oh, my God, this is amazing. It may seem like an unusual place for a salvage hunter, but Drew has a plan for the pieces he sees. Right now, it's a pile of plastic and bulbs and wires. I'm going to put that into the shop, yeah. market it in a completely different way. All of a sudden, that is the most kitsch piece of pop art on the market today. Right, we'll just go through here then. Bazzle! Bazzle. Yeah. <laughs> He's been in the illuminations for a number of years and... Uh, Basil brush. Boom, boom. He tells jokes. <laughs> so we have the, the... As kids walk past it, there's a CD playing various jokes. Obviously, the, the great joke we were considering was sticking in a Chubby Brown CD <laughs> one night, but we decided against it, I'm pleased to say. Looks like Julian. <laughs> <laughs> the same red nose as well. <laughs> same shape and everything. We used to have a bigger one. Did you? Yeah. It's probably modelled on him. <laughs> wow, <laughs> look at that. That is so That's cool. Awesome. You build all these here? Everything's built here. Yeah. Is this for sale? That'd be dead expensive. 
How much, is, how, much is dead, to, how much is dead expensive? You're looking at at least 10 grand. At least 10 grand. Ooh, because I'd have to replace it. You're looking at very, very serious money for a peacock like that. What's, what does something like, what's that, something like that It would run cost for? probably about seven or eight grand to build. Really? Yeah. Um, no. Now, you have to let me buy that. <laughs> oh, I really like that. That's lovely. You really like that? Yeah, it's lovely. It, it would have to be quite a lot of money, I'm afraid. So far, nothing is under £7,000 a piece. If Drew can't find something more in his price range, he'll be going home with an empty van. Acid House Blackpool Lamps. It's a rave moment. It is. Rave lamps, I like We've those We've got a few a lot. of those. You have? Yeah. Very, very saleable, very now. Once rewired and reconditioned, unique pieces like these from Blackpool could easily net Drew around £500 each. Just for dipping my toe in, cos I don't buy Blackpool illuminations every day. Don't you? Not every day, no. <laughs> but what sort of money are we looking at? 50 quid. From £7,000 to 50, it's a unique opportunity for Drew. We'll take all those. Yeah. Wonderful. Good. Deal. Fantastic. First deal. Thank you. I'm not going to argue with him on the price. We're lucky to get in here. If you get into somewhere like this and the prices are anywhere near, I'm just going to buy it. These are good. They're going in the office. <laughs> the warehouse is so vast that it takes several hours for Drew to explore, and the pieces get ever more surreal. Something here that you may or may not be interested in, probably the largest jelly babies you've ever seen in your life. They're like alien jelly babies. They are. It's a very Blackpool moment. It is. Um, <laughs> Only in Blackpool. Although less saleable than the smiley faces, these could still bring around £150 per piece. Are these for sale? Yes, these are, these are up for sale. What sort of money? 50 quid each. 50 quid Same each. Same again. I'm going to think about money. that, but I'd be looking at taking the lot. Well, let's see how many we've got. Yeah. Come up with a figure for all of it, and yeah. then we'll talk. OK, let's do that. See if you fancy this. Definitely. Wow. I should hold back and be a bit, you know, but no, I want that. In the middle of the road, he used to say, flashbang wallop. What a picture. Uh, what a picture, basically, yeah. So each one of these was sort of exploding in the middle of the road. Yeah, these I really like. This is great for shops. There's a whole s crate of them over there. That one's got flash on and... Just bang. Wall up. up. Pop art pieces like these could easily bring £225 each. Are we in the same sort of price bracket of the rest? 40. I have to have them, so the person walking into the shop will say the same thing. They're going to want them. They're incredible. Fine. Yep. OK, let's have a deal on those. Lead on. Let's have a look at well, some more. Well, there's something else I'd like to, to uh, cast your beady eye on. OK. We have a series of eyes. Oh, God. Oh, that's brilliant. I think the appeal of having a two-foot day glow illuminated eye on your wall is quite high. The oh. scare the fact the kids, woo! Those are fantastic. Those are instantly, that's a cool thing. Yeah, they are. You're going to want one of those, aren't you, in your house? Uh, not personally, but I know people <laughs> that will. I'd like it. I'd put it in the shop. Smaller pieces are always easier to sell. These eyes could bring around £150 each. You want to know how much? I do. I get about 50 quid. Because there's a transformer on it, there's a bit of non-neon. There's a bit more sure. to those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With prices like these, Drew has long since given up haggling. Now it's just a case of picking the best pieces. I can see these being a big oh, seller. <laughs> I put it in, certainly put it in shop displays, window displays, in a bar. Interested? Definitely, yes. OK, brilliant. Yeah. Richard, yeah, a, a really good day. I've enjoyed nice it. To see you. I really All have. Best. Take care. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. See Safe you again. Journey. How often do you get to go into somewhere like that to find these pieces just so unique? I've got a couple of buyers who are going to be falling over themselves for some of these pieces, for decorated pieces. Um, it's just going to look brilliant. I'm happy. We've got a full van. We've got stuff to sell. We're going to make some money. But the proof of the salvage hunter's pudding is in the unloading. What will the team think of his pop art purchases? <laughs> Bang, <laughs> wallop! <laughs> Them laughing at what we bought, it's always a good start. <laughs> That's cool. It's like an acid house thing. Again, it all lights up. It's a perfect bar piece. So we did well. You did really well. What do you think of those? Aliens. But jelly babies. Do you know what's going to happen is people are going to buy these when they're drunk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's how your eyes look this morning. Drew already has some buyers in mind, but Rebecca has an idea of her own.
Opticians. Opticians perfect. Opticians. <laughs> they will buy them, Drew. A lot of people have got hangovers. Opticians for Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Drew can see potential in even the most bizarre. It's so varied. It's easy to say what we don't buy than what we do buy. I mean, for example, you know, flashbang wallop signs. Uh, if you'd asked me last week, can you get us flashbang wallop signs, we'd have gone, well, we haven't got any in stock, but uh, we might know somebody who does. Um, and that's, you know, that's part and parcel of it. Split them in half, and so they go flat on the wall, because at the moment, both, both sides oh, light up. You've had worse, haven't you? A lot worse. Yeah. This is a walk in the park today. <laughs> There's a lot of work to do on these because we've got to make new backboards for them all. So when we first got them, we looked at them and thought we're going to have to split them in half. So we do sort of get more bang for our buck. We get two sides. There's more work doing it that way because we've got to make a new lighting rig for the inside, but they look a million times better that way. Time for the moment of truth. A few days later, Rebecca's showing Drew's latest purchases to a regular client. Where are you? It's Wales. Yes. Actor and pop sensation H from 90s band Steps. Where's that from? That's from Carter's Steam Fair. It's lovely, isn't it? I love it. I want it. Has it got your name on? It has, depending on a special price from Drew. I will phone <laughs> Drew and say I've got a very special friend. Yes. Shall I? <laughs> Emphasis on special. Special. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. I love it because I have just bought some carousel horses on eBay and I'm going to put this above them. <gasps> oh, I love it. I, I, I love it. I. I have no idea where I'm going to put it, but I was yeah. Just about to say where you're going to put it. No idea. No idea. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Times two, please. OK, I'll get the other one and we'll bring them out to the car for you. Lovely, when okay. the rain stops. When the rain stops, yes. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Bye. Oh. <clears throat> There's nothing Drew likes more than a good scrapyard. News has come in of a new one he hasn't yet visited. And within minutes, he's on the road. Well, there's plenty of old farmyards around here. In fact, it's like, it's great. There's, there's a tons of old stuff. This time, it's Julian who will get to see the master in action. They're on a six hour drive to Scotland to meet tractor fanatic and scrap dealer Davy Reed. I just love a tractor. Well, some people put it down to a disease. You have to collect. I have 154 tractors, I think, something like that. So he's just a bit eccentric. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Look at this one. place. Look at this one. No. Is it? Over there. <laughs> what a cool coach. Look at that. Oh, well, let's Dog. pull in here. Let's pull in here. Yes, see. absolutely. Fantastic. Well, if we can't find something here, we can't find something anywhere. Drew and Julian are met by Davy and his son, Richard. So, what do you want to see first? I do, I'm happy to have a look around. Drew needs to find a serious amount of stuff to make this long trip worthwhile. Will this junkyard yield enough treasures to keep the team back home happy? Places like this used to be really common. You know, there was one in every village, on every road, there was always a farm with some stuff lying around outside, but now you just don't tend to find them. To find little places like this, still, fantastic. Jeez, look at that. It's, this is amazing. That's incredible. Stationary engineer. It weighs 10 and a half ton. The flywheel at the back is 7 ton. Uh, the shaft that drives it is a ton. And the body's 4 and a half ton. Single cylinder diesel made in 1928. Wow. That's unbelievable. <laughs> That's crazy. Heavy days, engineering. Isn't it? It's proper built, isn't it? So you've got all sorts of stuff here. So, so um, I'm guessing what that's for. Do you want to tell us what it's for? Uh, oh, not really. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, to do with animals. Yes, it's for castrating. Castrating. Castrating yeah, yeah. bull calves. What? Do you want to demonstrate? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no, put that down. No, yeah, it's safe. I'll, I'll, leave, it that I'll <laughs> leave that well alone. That's not I... a mantique. Ah, uh, Richard, pull out. Luckily, it's not long before he spots something that he knows his customers will like. 
lovely look at that. It's evocative of steam locomotives. It's a great looking thing. Oh, it like is that. really nice. I like that. Uh, it's, it's quite good. Is something like that, is that for sale? So, so would it be right in saying that this would be like a wooden former they'd have, they'd have made for sand casting? Yep, And is. then that made the casting mark in the sand? In the sand, yeah. Then they pour yeah. the cast into there. Something as unique as this is an instant work of art, and Drew's interior design customers would easily pay around £350 for this casting wheel. Give you, what would you want for it? Oh, I have no I idea. need to talk money with you. You give me an offer. Talk money with me. I'll talk money with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be, I'd like to buy that. I think it's a you nice thing. You give me an offer. How much would you offer for that? 75 Not much, man. We better you. So, let's call it 100 100 okay. pounds. Do you pound for that? Is that all right? Yeah, okay, great. Cheek, it? Yeah, deal. I'll have that. Deal. Thank you. Yeah. There's going to be collectors fit in so many different ways for me to sell that on again, but it's in lovely condition. Is that for sale? Yeah, for sale. Is that for sale? Yeah. Signs like these are not rare, but always popular. This example could sell for fifty pounds. So what do you want for this then? Give us an offer. Um, I'm going to start. I'm going to start low again. Twenty pounds for something like that. I dig it. Yeah. Sweet. That's, yeah. Right. yeah. That's that's. Oh, that's sure. It, you want to get way, you're not going to get any more money that's out of me for it. Quite a good offer. Yeah. That's that's bogger. <laughs> that thing actually cost me fifty pence about twenty years. Ago. Twenty. <laughs> there you go. What about, are you complaining about? About, about twenty years ago. <laughs> you know how inflation's hit the country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Onto the government. That's fine. I'll take that for twenty yeah. quid. Uh, the sunlight soap one. What do you want for that one? A well-known brand name can push the price up. This sunlight soap sign could sell for £80. I think... I think uh, well, what, you, would, what would you... Can you start this one, no. then? You, you tell me what you want this time. I would, st I would start high. 200 <laughs> <laughs> You're joking. What, is there five more of them? No, maybe a double-sided one. No, no. no, no we're, no. we're very far apart no, on that okay. one. We're very far... Do you want me to tell you what I think I'd want to well, pay for? Well, go on, 40. 40 quid? Yes, yeah, so we're only £160 really pound apart. I thought you'd get another in a day. I can, they're the, they're, they are a common one. They are a common one. Are so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you oh, yeah, that's a common one, aren't you? Yeah, that's a common one. Yeah. 55? No. Oh, 45. OK, deal. Deal. There you go. All right, we got it. You better work hard there for your money. Aye. And I paid too much for it. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I did. Okay. As long as you're happy. I'm all right. <laughs> it's mine now. <laughs> Ooh. As Drew's leaving, he spots something very unusual. I literally could not believe my eyes. Sales. For sale? Yeah. For sale. It's a place for great. OK. These are giant clamshells. Some say they're fossilised giant clamshells. Jesus. I don't think they are. I think they're just a giant clamshell. Wow. I'm not going to move this. Wow, yeah. cracking decorative pieces, though. Pieces like these are a rare find and could command prices of over £1,500 for the pair. And these are a decorator piece par excellence. They are amazing. What sort of money? What do you want? Where do you want to be? £300. Oh, that's a bit too much. The condition's not great. Um, I think two, 200 for the pair in this condition. 275 um, look, one, one off a 225 for the pair. <laughs> yeah. All right, cheers. Been a hard one, Thank you. There's a bloody big muscle in there, wasn't there? I wouldn't like to have a fight with him. Imagine getting caught your arm in there. Look at that, look at the size of that muscle that was in there. Thanks. That was great. Thank really yeah. enjoyed it. And we bought some gear, so I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. And you've got your money. We've got some, some rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Drew's spur of the moment trip to Scotland has thrown up some incredible salvage and lots of new restoration projects for the team. It's nice when I bring something back and Rebecca and the, and the lads all think the same way. Sunlight soap. Sunlight soap. All the way from Portsmouth. All about yeah. from Liverpool to Scotland. Excellent. I'm back again. I'm back again. Yeah. yeah. Great. Sunlight soap. Yeah. Nice. Little soap. thing there I thought was quite cool, like the colour. Sort of Batman sort of look yeah. about it, I thought quite nice. Oops, you know. And these are my favourite thing we've found. What, Julian and Gavin? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Come on, the suspense is killing me. Do you know what it is? It looks like a giant a shell. shell. Imagine that biting you on the arse. What is it? Giant clams. 
No. Yeah. Look at the size of that. The size of that? That's unbelievable. The clams are amazing. First, I just thought they're not real. They're totally just wow. Good as a pair. Yes. I'm not going to sell them singularly. Should sell a... them singularly, but I think... I it's think as a pair, pair, it's more yeah. of a wow factor, isn't I it? I think so. The team are impressed with Drew's finds, but the same can't be said for his job. Hopefully somebody will shell out for them. Boo! Oh, Drew? I'm here all week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He's brought back some really unusual stuff. There's a lot for Gavin to do. Get all the colour off it and wax it and polish it. Get some hooks on it, stick it on the wall. So Drew has come up trumps again, and his pupils can only wonder at the skills of their master. Yeah, I wonder why he buys them, but he always seems to... He always seems to sell them. I look at some stuff and think, oh, my God, that's going to be here forever, but it's usually gone in a week. I'm just putting some wax on this. Just give it a bit of life. So you get that nice shine. I put this in my bathroom with a big bar of soap in. <laughs> Drew's phoned up and said he's sold the clamshells uh, to uh, a customer of ours who's bought other stuff. Uh, we're going to tie it up with the shipment we're sending over to him in saint Chapay, which is great news. Inside the office, the team's handiwork brings new meaning to the phrase, keeping an eye on things. I like the eye in the roof. Do you like that? Yeah, yeah. Is it a permanent feature? Yes. Really? Until we sell it. OK. I'm not that enamoured with it. No, it's OK. No. <laughs> we'll take it down. <laughs> what have you done? Have you glued it on there? No, 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 it's only on with double-sided tape. We've We're got glad to see pizza. that you're not wasting your time while I'm tape. away. No, we did this after working hours. What, so you charged me overtime to do it? No, we all came in <laughs> at 7 o'clock when we knew we'd finish all our day's work. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Some of the Blackpool Illuminations have found a new home in Scarborough. This is a house or a bungalow that's about to fall off a cliff. Two houses have already fallen off, and this is the next one. So I bought this house as an art piece, as an installation, with a view to taking photographs and making paintings from it, doing a whole series of things. And so I've been given about 18 months to produce a whole series of art pieces. And this includes, this is the very latest one, you know, Flashbang Moloch. But the, the, the landslide has just stopped for the time being. It's kind of, you know, it's, held, it's holding its breath, so to speak. You know, in theory, the house could go over today. In fact, while we're standing here now, you know, we might hear a few creaks, and if we do, we'll have to jump out pretty quickly. Turn the lights on. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Flash, bang, wallop, fantastic. <laughs> Even by our standards, that's a weird one. I don't think we've ever sold anything to anybody who's purposely going to break it. <laughs> <laughs> 